Uh, but I know who you are. You're Adam Smith. Hello. Hello. Hello there. And uh, Wang Chi, hello to you. Uh, hello again. Good to see you both. And you're here uh, to talk about dinosaurs, which yes. is fantastic. With uh, a great deal of excitement already building about an exhibition which is coming up to Nottingham next year, is it? In, uh, what is it? Next year, next summer. Yeah, next summer. And uh, this is like... Uh, the Proper dinosaurs, real dinosaurs. Well, skeletons. Real, real dinosaur skeletons. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and the um, idea that uh, we'll be able to see these skeletons. I mean, in a sense, why should we get so excited about that, Adam? Because we, we, we could go to the Natural History Museum, couldn't we, and see a dinosaur? You could go to several museums in this country, but you won't see these special dinosaurs that we're having. The Dinosaurs of China exhibition, uh, which we're having at Wollaton Hall, the Nottingham Natural History Museum, is a world-exclusive exhibition featuring dinosaurs that we have handpicked from the IVPP in China, that's the Institute of Vertebrate Paleontology and Paleoanthropology, and they include some of the most important fossils in the world, and so if anybody wants to see these, the only place to see them outside of China is Nottingham. Oh, really? The yes. one place? So, yeah. Wang Chi, you obviously have the the, chi the insider view on the, the Chinese side of this. So, uh, the, the exhibition is effectively your idea, isn't it? Uh, yes, it's actually developed from the uh, um, research collaborations in between the University of Nottingham and the IVPP since 2011. And we did some interesting projects about how to rebuild their old museums, which contain the big dinosaurs in there. And then the idea about the uh, Dinosaurs of China is actually coming uh, in the summer of 2013, and I knock on the door of the Wellington Hall and say, I have an idea, I want to bring some Chinese dinosaurs into the <laughs> Nottingham Natural History Museum. Is that good? And then I'm very lucky, no one kicked me out. And <laughs> I start to work with, uh, with Adam, and then <laughs> that's the beginning. Yeah. So they, they, they embraced the idea. Uh, and um, is, is there much difference between what we would know as a a European or a North American dinosaur and a Chinese dinosaur or a dinosaur's dinosaurs? Well, the dinosaurs of China are different, but they all belong to the same family. So a lot of the dinosaurs in our exhibition will be the Chinese cousins of the, say, North American dinosaurs or the European dinosaurs. So the same families, but different species. So a lot of these dinosaurs will not be familiar names. We're not going to have T-Rex or Triceratops or Stegosaurus or anything like this. But we will have their relatives and there will also be um, new discoveries. And that's another reason why people don't know their names is because a lot of them have only been discovered in the last 10 to 20 years. So this is cutting edge scientific research that we're going to have on display. Wow. And as people share knowledge around the world, I suppose we can start to get some sense of the evolution of dinosaurs and how you know, different uh, creatures adapted to different parts of the world. Uh, yes, and one key point about this exhibition is we want to highlight the evolution of dinosaurs and it's all based on the um, uh, new discoveries since 1996, where we found the feathered dinosaurs from Liaoning province in the northeastern part of China. And uh, since then, we have lots lots of feathered dinosaurs actually turned up, and that enriched the uh, paleontologists and also the public knowledge about uh, where the dinosaurs um, involved too. And then uh, one of the conclusions could be like uh, the living birds flying around us today are descendants of dinosaurs. Uh, so, uh, as we sort of talk about this, the, the key message is that the exhibition at uh, the Woolerton Hall is next year. Uh, Adam, you're sort of chief paleontologist at Woolerton Hall. So, so was uh, Wang, uh, and you, did, did he meet you first of all? Were you the one, I mean, when he came with his idea of the exhibition of dinosaurs? I, I wasn't the first point of contact, but we quickly met each other. We and, would, and, as, and, as a paleontologist. Yeah, say, yeah. common interest. Yeah, so, yeah. so we got on very quickly. Yeah, and uh, you're working at the University of Nottingham. Right? Yes, okay. yes. So uh, there's, there's two great academic minds here talking about dinosaurs. Dinosaurs, uh, which is interesting because uh, you know dinosaurs, whilst I can understand the academic appeal of them, are also fascinating to children. You know, from from tiny tots seem to love dinosaurs, particularly you know big purple dinosaurs, Barney, for example. I think everybody loves dinosaurs. Ch is, children do. They're scary, but, scaly, uh, nasty-looking things. Why do kids love dinosaurs? I think that's why they like them, isn't it? They're, they're unusual. It's like they're monsters but they're real, so they actually did exist. Yeah. And I think that's why they have this amazing pull yeah. to, to children especially, but 
adults like us as well. Is it similar in China, Wang, growing up as a child? Are, are dinosaurs used as toys? Uh, yes, so lots of toys about dinosaurs. And when I grew up, grew up in China, and then dinosaurs is always my, you know, favorite. And then, uh, for example, I live in Beijing, and it's very close to the Beijing Natural History Museum. And the dinosaur hole in the Natural History Museum is my, you know, favorite past to visit every Sunday. Well, we're going to talk more about dinosaurs, what is actually going to be on show at the exhibition in a couple of minutes on BBC Radio. And of course, there is the, the small matter of Christmas to get through before we get to the new year. And uh, bringing in uh, another Christmas. Andy Williams, and it is the most wonderful time of the year on BBC Radio Nottingham. Thinking about the exhibition coming to Nottingham next year, and uh, it is uh, an exhibition which will, I think, fascinate people uh, from uh, young to old. Uh, it's all about dinosaurs, and there will be real dinosaurs there. Uh, of course, not living, breathing dinosaurs. We're, we're away from that sort of technology, I assume, Adam Smith and Wang Chi. Jurassic Park isn't become. We, we might have a, uh, a real dinosaur running around the park, uh, whether it's real flesh and bones or maybe contains a human. Oh. Yet to be decided. <laughs> but I think there'll be other things around the park to keep people interested as well. Yeah. And uh, so what will the, the, the exhibition focus on? What's going to draw the headlines, if you like? What's the, what's the big thing? I mean, liter is, it, is it literally a big dinosaur or...? Well, we have a Mamanchisaurus uh, come to us, and uh, that's not the first time for Mamanchisaurus coming out of China, but that's uh, one of the largest dinosaurs. But the special parts of this dinosaur this time is the dinosaur will run up to 13.5 meters high, so that will be the tallest dinosaur that's ever been built wow. in the UK, or even in Europe. Yeah. yeah, so that's uh, like four stories high, isn't it? It's, it's the height of three double-decker buses wow. stacked on top of each other. Yeah. And as Wang Chi says, that will make it the tallest mounted dinosaur skeleton in right. the UK ever, as far as we're aware. So is that actual size? Yeah, I mean. it's a life-size uh, cast of the real dinosaur bones. Right. We will have a real Mamenchisaurus bone there as well, so people can touch the real fossils. Yeah. But, of course, the big dinosaur skeletons have to be casts because they have to be lightweight enough to mount. I was wondering how we're going to, you know, approach the logistics of transporting dinosaur skeletons around the world. And uh, so, rule one, don't you actually use the real skeletons? Not for the big ones, but yeah. we will be having the genuine real fossils of the smaller dinosaurs. Wow. And these are the most important ones. Uh, and these are worth visiting alone. Despite these large, spectacular dinosaurs, the small ones are the special ones. They're the ones that have been discovered in the last 20, 10 to 20 years. Mm. And these preserve not just the bones, but the soft tissues as well. So, and this is particularly what's been found in China, the, the small ones. You, you talk to, well, the record was on, uh, about seeing the dinosaurs um, in, in their true colours. I mean, how can you know the colour of a dinosaur? Well, um, a man of feather dinosaurs has a, a printed their soft tissues on the fat, uh, a fossil, but uh, based on the scientific studies, so we can sort out or figure out what kind of colour they could be. For example, we have the uh, Cynosaurus trick, so that's a real fossil will come here. And then now we think around their tail, so you have like a, a brown, yellow, and the black patterns as a strip um, going along the whole tails. And then we also have the real fossil of the Microraptor, which but is the black. How do you know? How do you know it had rings on its tails? <laughs> And it's all based on the scientific analysis so underneath the field of microscope or by whatever kind of scientific way. So it's very reliable, and we can see the little pigments in there. And then we, you know, based on that, we could know what kind of color, but it could be. Because if you don't mind me saying, the world of paleontology and dinosaurs has, I think, been sullied by people having a guess at what might a dinosaur have looked like based on bones which may not have necessarily come from the same animal. I know this. Because uh, uh, where I grew up in Crystal Palace, there's a big area uh, which has dinosaurs, like models of dinosaurs roaming in the undergrowth. And as a young lad, I used to go there and be terrified and excited at the same time. Later in life, I was disappointed to find out that those representations are nothing like any uh, creature which ever roamed the earth. No, well, the view of dinosaurs is constantly changing as we find new evidence. Uh, but the key evidence that has been discovered and that will be on display in Dinosaurs of China is the soft tissues, which includes the feathers. And this proves, once and for all, that many groups of dinosaurs did have feathers and they weren't scaly. So the Velociraptors, for example, of Jurassic Park fame, 
in life they would have actually been feathered. They're more like birds if you saw one running along the street yeah. than a reptile. What advantage would feathers confer on a creature which wasn't trying to fly then? Why would they have feathers? It's a really good question. Um, there are several hypotheses that have been put forward, um, possibly for insulation. Uh, similar to why mammals have hair, and that might be a good way to um, regulate your temperature. Um, but also, we were talking about the colour of dinosaurs. Maybe the feathers were used to sport bright colours or to sport displays. So a lot of the feathery structures in dinosaurs look like they might have been display structures like um, in modern birds today. Right. And uh, is it a straight line to draw between those feathered dinosaurs that had feathers for non-flight purposes and the birds of, that we know today which use the feathers for flying? It's not a direct uh, straight line from those particular ones to birds, but it's like a branch tree. Right. And you can follow a route through those branches from one to the other. Mm. So... So dinosaurs evolved into birds. Birds literally are modern descendants of dinosaurs. So we now have a better idea of the shape and form of dinosaurs, uh, particularly thanks to uh, much of the discoveries in China. And we know the colour of some dinosaurs. Do we know whether sort of noise... Did they make a noise? Do we think... Cause it, again, it's easy to imagine they went... Rrrr, you know, uh, but, but that's just us thinking what a, a creature might say. Well, it's very difficult to know how they roam, actually. <laughs> but, you know, if you actually think about how the birds could um, uh, sing in the, in the air and in the, in the modern days or in the morning out of your windows, and uh, you might imagine uh, in the Jurassic Forest and when you have a lot of colorful little dinosaurs running around or glitting from one tree to another, uh, they might uh, sound really beautifully, you know, uh, like, a, like a bird singing. Yeah. Dinosaurs could have sounded like birds. The, the bird-like dinosaurs, like Velociraptor, almost oh. certainly did. Yeah. But Velociraptor is a big, scary, nasty, flesh-ripping thing, isn't it? It's not going to well, the one, a lovely the one in the movie, like a nightingale. Yeah. The movie version is, but the real version was a lot smaller and a lot less terrifying. At least oh, really? More like a turkey, really? humans. About the turkey in size, yeah. Okay. There were dinosaurs like Velociraptor that were, were larger, mm. um, but... Um, yeah, you'd, you'd run away from one of those. I see. You must realise this on a daily basis. You're up against a huge amount of misconceptions in non-experts' minds about what dinosaurs are and what they did and what they look like. Because well, they've yeah. been turned into these sort of scary things. That's exactly uh, one of the points of this exhibition, is to try and change people's minds, people's perceptions about what a typical dinosaur looks like. Uh, the, the, the actual tagline for the exhibition is ground shakers to feathered flyers. And the narrative will look at how we know that birds are dinosaurs and the evolutionary transitions from one to the other and to show that these feathered dinosaurs are part of a much more diverse picture of dinosaur anatomy. The exhibition runs when? Uh, next year? It's, it's through summer next year, 2017. Yeah. It's July through to October, 1st of July to 31st of October at Woolerton Hall. Will it sell out? Because it, it sounds to me as though this could be incredibly popular and people may not be able to get themselves... Well, I think the council has a good plan for the ticketings. And also, apart from the Wellington Hall, we have the lake site as a satellite uh, venue to show the dinosaurs. And there will be more family activities that happen over there. So and that's in the grounds of the University of Nottingham, the lake site. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. yeah. Mm. You're going to have dinosaurs by the lake side. Yeah, we have two wow. dinosaurs and very strange ones. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> that's good put the willies up the ducks and geese that they've got over there. <laughs> Our ancestors have come back to haunt us, they always say. So I say, yeah, to, to avoid disappointment, you can book the tickets online in advance, and they are on sale now. I've, I mentioned that dinosaurs do sort of hook into people at a young age. Can you remember what it was that, that got you interested in dinosaurs, Wang Chi? You, you know, were, were you as a child fascinated by them? Well, to be honest, when I was a child, the dinosaur's impression for me is no different with, uh, with anyone else. And I got North American dinosaurs a lot, and then uh, they are really big and sluggish. And also I know the T-Rex, that's my favorite. Uh, but when I grew up and I see the dinosaurs, the image of the dinosaurs actually changed the you know, constantly. Yeah. Uh, nowadays, the dinosaurs become more colorful, ideal, faster, or even smaller. Uh, and even, you know, the newest series say uh, the birds could be a descendant of the dinosaurs. And uh, if you look into the swans swimming in the Attenborough Nature Reserve, and they say, okay, that could be a, 
a white, beautiful <laughs> dinosaur. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's fascinating. So it makes the dinosaur story and dinosaur legend constantly developed yeah. and uh, make the dinosaur uh, even a more successful species on the world. When did, when did dinosaurs hook into you, Adam? As far as I can remember, really. I, I remember loving dinosaurs when I was a little kid. And I used to go fossil hunting. My dad used to take me to look for fossils in Lyme Regis and various other places around the UK. So I wasn't just interested in dinosaurs. I was interested in all, all sorts of prehistoric creatures. Yeah. Uh, but it was the dinosaurs, maybe, that were the most exciting. And that led to me studying dinosaurs at university and doing a PhD. And, yeah, really, I haven't looked back since. Uh, another question that I'm sure you're asking occasionally, what would have happened if the dinosaurs hadn't become extinct? We we believe, and we should have kept Michael Merrifield here, we believe it was a, an asteroid that did for the dinosaurs. Well, some of us believe that, I don't know. Yeah, well... 64 million years ago, was it? Uh, around then, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I suppose there's two, two things to consider. Um, the first is that technically dinosaurs aren't extinct because birds are dinosaurs and they're all around us today. So there, there was this one group of dinosaurs that survived that mass extinction 64 million years ago. Uh, the other thing to consider is that because the, of the extinction of the large dinosaurs, the long neck dinosaurs, things like T-Rex, that left a niche open that other animals could move into. And it was the mammals, and humans are mammals, that moved into that niche at the end of the age of the dinosaurs. So it was only because of their extinction that mammals like us could evolve. Yeah, but if we hadn't... If we hadn't, dinosaurs... Would di dinosaurs those those large-scaly like... dinosaurs would have probably continued along their evolutionary paths, and who knows, 65 million years later, what they would be like. Maybe they'd be more intelligent. Maybe they would even learn how to build houses. We'll never know. It's nice to uh, speculate. Yeah, so we, we could be like, uh, you know, three chameleons sat here discussing this if the, the dinosaurs... Had In an alternative world. Yeah, OK. And what, oh, you talked about intelligence, actually. Were dinosaurs intelligent? Because, uh, again, the, the image I have is of a large creature with a small head. I think I'm thinking of a, a probably never existed even, a brontosaurus. Did a brontosaurus ever exist? A huge body. Of yeah, the neck brontosaurus of the did exist. Did it have a brain in its in its hips or something? There was there was a thought that it might do Stegosaurus, brontosaurus, because yeah. they were so big. They thought that it would take a long time for the the brain impulses to get from the the head yeah. all the way down the body to the tail. Yeah. Uh, but that's just a myth. It, it, right. There's no real evidence right. that that was true. So were, were they intelligent creatures? Do we think dinosaurs? Well, from the uh, fossil remains or the uh, evidence we collected from the field, and then um, somehow you can show the dinosaur has some level of the intelligence. For example, in China or somewhere else around the world, you see a lot of dinosaur eggs actually getting together in one site. And you could see the dinosaur has an organization, social organization. So eggs from different mothers all well, laid could, in the same area? Uh, it's an egg from different mothers, but the, the different mothers belong to one family. And they're getting together. You can think you have a dinosaur nursery. And they lay the egg together, and you could have some adult dinosaur look after the whole family's eggs oh. together. That could be very interesting for you know uh, animal behavior. Yeah, yeah. I, wanna, I want to pet one now. Yeah. Thank you both for coming here. Uh, we'll uh, be talking, I'm sure, a lot more about the exhibition, but it uh, is running uh, next year at Woolerton Hall with the uh, uh, satellite exhibition, if you like, at the uh, the Lakeside Centre, a more sort of child friendly uh, mm -hmm. bit at the Lakeside, so uh, you can. Uh, pays your money and takes your choice, but it is, uh, as you've heard, a unique opportunity in Nottingham to see dinosaurs which will not be seen anywhere else in this country in the foreseeable future, coming over from China, uh, thanks to the efforts and enthusiasm of Wang Chi. Thank you for being here. Thank you. And uh, the, uh, the ability to say, yes, that's a great idea, when uh, paleontologist Adam Smith at the Wollaton Hall Museum heard about the idea of a dinosaur exhibition. Yes, that's a great idea, he said, and now it's going to happen uh, into next year. Half past three on BBC Radio Nottingham.